Hi everyone, I'm Amy from Cakes and Faces and today I've got some tips for you if you're going to Japan for the Rugby World Cup. And even if you're not going for the rugby, there's going to be lots of things that might be useful for your trip. Now, I must admit, I don't really know anything about rugby, but I do know about Japan. So I'm going to go through how to get around Japan, what the food's like, money and all things like that. If you want to know more about any of these things, there's a playlist on my channel called Your Planning with lots of tips and advice for planning your trip. And there's new Japan videos every Thursday if you want to subscribe. First thing, what if I don't speak Japanese? Lots of people ask me about this and it might kind of put you off going to Japan, but the truth is the language barrier really isn't as difficult as you might think. Lots of signs are in English that includes all the signs at the stations and on the train. When you're on the metro, they sometimes even have a display showing which station you're at and which is the next one coming up so you can't get lost. The ticket machines at the station have a button on the screen so you can switch the language to English. Lots of restaurants have English menus, especially in touristy areas, and when you go in, it's going to be obvious you're a foreigner, so they'll quite often give you the English menu automatically. Some people speak English, but not everybody, and other people understand a little bit of English because they learnt it at school, but don't feel confident enough to speak it back to you. But it really is amazing how much you can communicate with gestures and pointing at things. And if you want to learn a couple of words of Japanese, it does help, and people really do appreciate it. So yes and no are hai and ie. That's hai for yes, hai, and ie. For no, ie. Thank you is arigato, arigato, arigato. And sorry is another useful one, especially as Japan's such a polite country. That's sumimasen, sumimasen, sumimasen for sorry. You can also use that for excuse me if you want to catch someone's attention, like the waiter or somebody, you can say sumimasen. Next thing, how to get around. The best way to get around is on the trains. They're clean, they're on time, and they take you everywhere you need to go. So you really don't need to rent a car. I'd say forget about that, the train is the way to go. When you're traveling between cities, you can go on the bullet train, the Shinkansen, which is a really great experience. It's really comfortable and fast. You can check the routes on a site called hyperdia.com. It's all in English. You put in where you're traveling from and to, and it tells you the route and everything you need to know, the times and the prices. It's really useful. If you are going to be taking the bullet train, it might be worth getting a Japan Rail Pass, a JR Pass. It's only for foreigners, and you can go on as many bullet trains as you want, apart from the very fastest ones, but that's not a problem. You can also go on as many JR trains as you want. That's trains run by Japan Railways. On Hyperdia, they're the ones that start with JR. What you can't go on is the Tokyo Metro or lines run by other rail companies. It's not cheap. At the moment, it's about £225 for a seven day pass, but bullet train tickets are expensive. So it's actually a really good deal. So should you get a JR pass? The general rule is if you're gonna be doing a return trip between Tokyo and Osaka, or a trip of an equivalent distance, it's going to be worth getting the pass because it costs about the same. If you want to get one, it's only for foreigners, so you have to order it before you go to Japan. They post you a voucher that you can then swap for the actual pass once you get to Japan. I get mine from japanrailpass.co.uk. You can look up prices on hyperdia.com and see if it's going to be worth it for you. I'd recommend making seat reservations for the bullet train because it might be busy. You can do that when you get to Japan at the ticket office at the station. They usually have an English speaker and there's more about that in my how to take the bullet train video. If you're going north of Tokyo to Kamaishi or Sapporo, you can make your reservations online before you go. The other option for traveling long distance between cities is internal flights. Both JAL and ANA have special packages that are pretty good value. And there's also some budget Japanese airlines with really cute names like Peach Airways and Vanilla Air. Flights might be easier for really long distances, but compare prices and times. And remember that for flights, you need to actually get to the airport and you need to build in time for checking in and all of that. 
I'd say that for trips like from Tokyo to Osaka, it's only two and a half hours on the bullet train, so that's the easier option. But for really long trips, like if you've got a match in Oita and then you need to get up to Sapporo, a flight might be the easier option. So that was long distance travel between cities. For local trains, I think the best ticket to get is a Suica or Pasmo card. They're both pretty much the same thing. It's just like an Oyster card in London. You load it up with credit at the ticket machine, then when you get to the ticket barriers, you just swipe in and swipe out. It's really easy. Trains in Japan are run by lots of different companies, but Suica is valid for everything, so you don't need to worry about whether you've got the right ticket. There are day passes that might save you money if you're going on the train a lot, but not all of them are valid for all the lines. So I'd say a Suica card is just the easiest option. Now you can't really use your Suica card for bullet trains, so use your JR pass or a separate ticket for them, and then use your Suica card for everything else. You can get it from the ticket machine when you get to Japan. Now the opening ceremony and some of the finals are gonna be at the main Tokyo Stadium, which actually isn't in central Tokyo. So it's outside of the metro and all of this. It's to the west, 20 minutes from Shinjuku Station, you need to take the Keio line to Tobitaku Station. And just as a warning, Shinjuku Station is the busiest station in the world. It's huge and you're pretty much guaranteed to take a wrong turning at some point, but you'll be okay. Just leave yourself plenty of time and follow the signs to the Keio line. Once you get to Tobitaku Station, it's a five minute walk to the stadium and that trip isn't covered by your JR pass, but you can use your Suica card. Before I carry on, as well as making videos about Japan, I'm also a designer. If you find my videos helpful, you can support me by making a purchase from my shop, cakeswithfaces.co.uk. There's t-shirts, hoodies, dresses, flip-flops, my hedgehog scarf, enamel pins, and worldwide shipping to any country. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And now back to the video. Pocket Wi-Fi. I'd recommend renting a pocket Wi-Fi so you can use the internet. Everyone in your group can connect their phone or their iPad, and then you can use the internet when you're out and about, just like at home. It's really useful so you can use Google Maps, you can look up times, you can use TripAdvisor and all of those things. I got mine from japanrailpass.co.uk but there's lots of other places you can get them from too. Next, money and do you need cash or cards? Now paying by card isn't as widespread in Japan as it is in other countries, so you'll definitely need cash, that's Japanese yen, for things like ticket machines, vending machines, smaller shops and restaurants, and things like snacks at kiosks. But take your card as well, you'll be able to use it in lots of shops and restaurants. One thing to check is make sure your card's commission-free abroad so you don't get extra charges from your bank. If you wanna get cash out at ATMs, only some of them accept foreign cards. The easiest one to look for is 7-Eleven, that's a convenience store, and they're everywhere. There's more about all of this in my video about money in Japan. And while we're on the subject, there's no tipping, so you don't need to worry about that. And there's not really any haggling. That would come across as quite rude. Things you need to know about etiquette and Japanese culture. Japanese culture is all about being polite. Now, it's a generalization, but people tend to be quite reserved and not very outgoing, but they are really friendly. Sometimes when I've been lost and obviously looking confused, people have come up to me and helped me find the place I'm looking for, and they're always really nice. And for me, that's one of the best things about being in Japan. Next, when you're in a restaurant, don't hang about after you've finished. Lots of restaurants are quite small and sometimes there's a line of people outside waiting to get in. So the culture is eat and then leave when you're done. Don't eat when you're walking along in the street. People just don't really do it. They also don't really eat on the train unless it's a long distance train or a bullet train, then that's fine. Also, when you're on the train, put your phone in silent mode. And if everyone else is being quiet, you should be quiet as well. People often tend to talk quite quietly on the train and not be too rowdy. So just judge the atmosphere. If everyone else is talking loudly, that's fine. But if everyone else is being quiet, you should follow suit. It's all about not bothering other people. 
Lots of people worry about doing the wrong thing in Japan, but really, as a foreigner, you do get a kind of free pass. No one's going to expect you to know all the little faux pas or things you should or shouldn't do. They're not going to care if you hold your chopsticks the wrong way or whatever. The important thing is that you're polite and respectful of other people. Just think about others, don't get in the way, don't be noisy if everyone else is being quiet, and you'll be fine. And finally, you need to carry your passport with you all the time. No one's ever asked to see mine, but you're supposed to have it on you. Food. There's all types of food. It's not just Japanese food, and it's not all rice and noodles. It's also not all fish. There is a lot of fish, but there's lots of other things too. You can get burgers, Italian, curry, Mexican, all sorts. And there is McDonald's. But Japanese food is excellent, so you should definitely try it. The standard is really good, even at cheap places, so you can't go too far wrong. It's also pretty reasonably priced, especially compared to the UK. It's a lot cheaper and often a lot better quality. Lots of places have English menus, and it's also really common to have picture menus, which is great because you know what you're going to get. It also makes it really easy to order if you don't speak Japanese because you can just point at what you want. Convenience stores are everywhere. The main chains are 7 Eleven, Family Mart, and Lawson's. They're open late, so you can always get a drink or a snack. The food is good quality and it's cheap. They also have fried chicken at the counter. They've got onigiri rice balls, which are the equivalent of sandwiches. They're only about 100 yen. And they have boxes of sushi. They also sell alcohol, which is pretty cheap if you want some drinks for your hotel room. Vending machines are everywhere. I've seen them in the park, in just quiet residential streets where people live, even up mountains. So you can always get a drink wherever you are. Here's some main Japanese foods you have to try. First, ramen, everyone's favourite, that's noodles in soup, and there's loads of different types. Sushi is so much cheaper in Japan and excellent quality. You can go to a conveyor belt sushi place, which is cheap and fun, or splash out on some higher end fancy sushi. In my experience, all of them are much better than sushi you get in the UK. Japanese curry, like katsu curry. My favourite is cocoa curry. You'll see the yellow sign. They give you a lot of food and it's pretty cheap. It's actually really good for breakfast after a night out. Another fun place to go is Tori Kizoku. They do yakitori or basically meat on sticks. Everything is 298 yen. That's all the plates of food and all the drinks. And that is a place you can hang out all evening. It's really good. There's a video on my channel. Having said that, don't just go to chains. Pop into any random little small place you find and that's where you're gonna have a really great experience. You can't go too far wrong. Weather. Now the Rugby World Cup runs from late September to the start of November. And to me, coming from the UK, autumn seems to start quite late in Japan. When I went in the first half of October, it felt just like the summer to me. At the start of October, it was really quite warm and humid, and you can see what that did to my hair. It cools down throughout October, but it's still quite warm, so you're gonna want summer clothes and a hoodie or jacket for the evening. Now, Japan's a long country, so it spans several different climates. If you're going to any matches in Sapporo, that's on Hokkaido, the North Island, so it's gonna be a bit cooler. When I was there in February, it was minus 12 degrees C and the coldest place I've ever been. Now, it's not going to be that cold when you're there, but towards the end of October, it's going to go down to about 10 degrees C, whereas in Oita, Kumamoto and Fukuoka, it'll be more like 20 degrees C and Tokyo will be about 18. Next, bars in Japan. If you want to go out to bars in the evening, Japanese pubs are called izakaya. They often serve small plates of food as well as drinks. In Tokyo, the major nightlife areas are Shibuya, Shinjuku and Roppongi, but you'll find places to go out in all the main areas and around major stations. They usually have beers, including Japanese beers like Asahi, Kirin and Sapporo. They'll have sake and shochu, which is a spirit. A chuhai is a shochu highball, that's shochu and fruit soda. And you'll also often find a whiskey highball, that's whiskey and soda, or a lemon sour is another popular one. And just like restaurants, there's no tipping. 
Some bars have a cover charge, which is a bit like an entrance fee of about 500 or 1,000 yen per person. They'll add it to your bill. It's just something to be aware of because it can add up if you go on a bar crawl to lots of different places. Are there any bad areas you should avoid? Crime levels are low in Japan. It's a really safe place. Sometimes you hear about tourists being overcharged in bars, but generally people aren't out to scam you and things like pickpocketing aren't a big problem. But use your common sense like you would anywhere. There aren't really any dangerous areas you need to avoid. You might hear that Kabukicho is the bad area of Tokyo. It's the red light district where you can also see Godzilla. There's a video on my channel. Really, it's perfectly safe if you're just walking around the streets. Just ignore the touts and don't go into any dodgy bars. The only bad stories I've heard have been when people have gone into the bars or let the touts drag them in somewhere and sometimes people have their drinks spiked or they get scammed out of loads of money. So just ignore the touts, keep walking, stay on the streets and you'll be fine. It's not somewhere you need to avoid. Things to do between rugby matches. VisitJapan2019.com is a really good site for the Rugby World Cup. It's got all the venue cities with ideas of things to do and how to get there. I'd love to give you loads more recommendations of things to do, but I think this video has become way too long already. There's videos on my channel with lots of ideas for Tokyo, Sapporo, Fukuoka, and the rest of Kyushu if you're going to matches in Oita or Kumamoto, including the Befu Hells, which is a really good day trip. There's things to do in Osaka if you're going to matches in Higashi Osaka or Kobe and they're both really near Kyoto which is the capital of historic Japan. In October you'll see lots of cute Halloween stuff. Even though it's western it's really caught on in Japan and if you're there for Halloween itself you should definitely try and get to a parade or a party. They look really fun. If you're near Tokyo or a match in Kumagaya at the right time, there's a festival in a place called Kawagoe on the 19th and 20th of October. When I went, it was just an amazing atmosphere. There were so many people, so many food stalls. You could just go around eating everything. It was fantastic. And to find what else is on when you're there, just search for festivals, Japan, October, and see what comes up. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try and help you out. Have a look at my Japan planning series for lots more tips and advice. And there's new Japan travel vlogs every Thursday. And have a great time. Japan is an amazing place and I always want to go back. You're gonna love it. See you soon. Bye bye.